Good morning. Uh, thank you to the band for a bright start to our worship this morning. It's good to be able to welcome you all to worship uh, once again today. Um, as usual, I'm going to begin with a few announcements. Uh, following the meeting this morning, the band are heading up to the upper precinct to play for a while, as usual. Um, if you want to go along, enjoy the music, um, help with making contacts, I'm sure that would be appreciated. Uh, some of our young people are heading off to divisional youth councils this afternoon. That's at two o'clock um, over at Birmingham Citadel. Uh, we wish them all the, all the very best as they join together with lots of other young people from across the West Midlands. Um, please do keep them in your prayers this afternoon. Uh, just to say as well for those concerned, the event is now free to enter. Uh, next Sunday is a special day for our church. Um, it's our young people's annual prize giving weekend. Uh, so our 10.30 worship We'll have a special focus on our young people. Um, it will also include uh, the enrolment of some new junior soldiers, so lots to look forward to uh, next Sunday morning. Majors Andrew and Valerie will be leading the worship. Uh, then next Sunday afternoon at 4.30, it's the occasion of our annual Songs of Praise. Um, as ever, it takes the form of a top ten countdown of favourite hymns and songs as voted for by yourselves and, and also various friends on the internet um, today's the deadline for getting your votes in, so if you've not already done it, uh, please do just take a minute just to, to tick three, three choices, um, either on the sheets in the foyer or, or via Facebook, if you've got the link there, it's, it's on our Facebook pages. Uh, more votes we get, the better. Um, once you've filled out your form, there is a box just out there that you can pop, your, pop, pop them into, or you can give them to me, um, either is fine. Today's the last chance. A uh, message from Ian now following last week's Harvest Festival, just to say a big thank you um, to everyone on behalf of the Food Bank uh, for your harvest donations last week. 
total amount of food sent to the food bank uh, was a very impressive 168 kilograms, um, as well as a box full of items that have been kept at the hall for emergency use. So thank you, uh, helping to make a difference in, in what are really quite difficult times for many at the moment. Uh, now, before I hand over to Andrew and Valerie, um, let's pray. Dear God, this morning we want to begin by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for all that you've given us, uh, for all those around us that care for us and love us. Thank you especially for this church, for the people here. Help us always to show your love to each other, um, to our community, to the world around us. Help us to make a positive difference. Thank you today, Lord, for this chance to come together again and be with you. Help us to use this time well. And let it be a time of reflection and praise, a time where we're each um, able to draw closer to you. I ask for your blessing on Andrew and Valerie as they lead us in our worship now. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you all. Just a couple more little things to say that regarding the food bank, you will hopefully have noticed there is a big box in the foyer near the entrance um, and that is going to be there every week and if you feel like you're able to bring an odd tin or an odd packet that could be put in that box then that collection for the food bank will continue as, as a gift from us as a church. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing I really want to push is uh, the encounter prayer gathering that is held on the 20th to the 22nd of January at Swanwick. Um, some of us have attended that in the past. It's a really good weekend. Um, it, it just focuses on prayer, but there is lovely worship and fellowship with people from around the territory. Um, and it's called All Together in One Place. It's going to be a really good weekend. Uh, there is a cost there. I'm going to put this back up on the notice board, but all I want to say is, don't worry about the cost because there will be ways and means to help us uh, to fund it uh, and certainly to give a contribution <coughs> towards it, excuse me. <coughs> so yeah, so if you're interested and you want to come along with me and Karen and one or two others that are already showing interest, then please let me know. Let's have that conversation and make it possible. Thank you. Good morning, folks. Welcome into worship on this special day. Special day because we're in God's presence to worship in this way. I'm going to sing our first song this morning, and it's that song, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise him in glad adoration and let's praise him in glad adoration this morning as we stand and sing these uh, verses straight through please
Thank you for a good start to our worship this morning. And the bonus was we had an extra verse, which confuses us a little bit. Anyway, there we are. <laughs> Sadly, Liam's missing this morning, so Seb's in charge. So. <laughs> but thank you anyway. We're going to move now into our time of prayer. And we use that lovely chorus. When I talk with Jesus, bring to him my care. With his own sweet comfort, Jesus answers prayer. And as we um, focus in our time of prayer just now, there's been lots of incidents this past week which have um, helped me focus on certain things, but lots of sad things really. We continue to think of the ongoing issues within the Ukraine and Russia. And we just ask, Lord, bring your peace, don't we? And then that um, explosion in County Donegal in Ireland, in that petrol station where there were many victims. And uh, we think of the families of those victims. And then that tragic news which couldn't have failed to break your heart when you saw the news of that nursery attack in Thailand. Um, 38 fatalities, including lots of the toddlers that were at that nursery. So we, our hearts bleed for those people, break for those people, as we think of them in our prayer time just now. But then we think of the wonderful world in which God has created, and we think of our church here, and Mark mentioned next weekend as we have our YP anniversary, where we celebrate the youth of this core. And friends, that's a blessing, isn't it? I have colleague officers who have no youth at their core, who are really struggling to attract young people, but yet we have a good core group of people, young people, that we can be proud of, but also we can thank God for, can't we? And we think of, like Mark said today, our youth, some of our youth are going to youth councils in Birmingham. And we would ask that God will speak to them in a wonderful way as they are the, the future of the church, aren't they? And we ask that the Lord will give to them the gifts that he has got for each one of them, I'm sure. So we're going to sing through these this chorus, when I talk with Jesus, then I'll bring all of this into our prayer just now. Lord, we just want to bring to you all of those situations we've mentioned. Situations which really touch our hearts as our feelings go out for those people who have lost loved ones in these difficult days. And we ask that somehow your Holy Spirit will intervene into those situations, place godly people there, people who can Bring to you, to those people, your comfort and your love and your strength.
But Lord, we're also mindful of our wonderful core that we have here, our church family, which stretches so many ages as such, from the babies to the elderly, from various cultures, various parts of the world, actually. We thank you that we can find ourselves here in your presence this morning. But in particular, I want to think of our young people and the blessing that they bring to this church family and the value that they have within this church family. And Lord, help us each to be good nurturing mentors for those people, those youngsters, as they go through some difficult things in their lives. So help us, Lord, to be the people to show the examples that they need to see of Jesus in our lives as well. And for those who are going to Youth Council later on today, Lord, we just ask that you will truly fill that place with your Holy Spirit so they can come away from there knowing that they've been in your presence, sharing in fellowship in that way. So Lord, we're mindful in this chorus that we bring to you our prayers. And in these moments, Lord, we can think of individuals in our own lives, in our own communities who need our, their, our prayers just now for their lives. And so we would ask that in these moments of quietness, that you will just fill those people with your Holy Spirit as we've uplifted their names and those situations just now. So, Lord, we would ask all of these things in and through your powerful name, the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, do you remember last week, youngsters, I brought my special army bag? Yes. <clears throat> and in the bag, I had lots of different coloured balls. Do you remember? And you helped me, yeah, to think about different things that we're thankful for. Well, I've got something else in the bag today. Does anybody want to come and see what it is? Yeah, come on then, if you want to come. Yeah, come on, Oscar. Yeah. Oh, come on, Matthew, Benjamin. Yeah. Oh, just a minute, just a minute, let's wait. Is Caspian coming? No. Oscar's, yes. Kalani's coming. Oscar's coming. Yay. Now then. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Without 
Andrew before I do <laughs> of Andrew yeah. yeah wow he's revived it a little bit but it's lost its breath hasn't it and we must remember to always keep coming to God in prayer you say your prayers don't you yes when we say our prayers God will keep topping up his breath in us so we'll never look like that daft balloon looked yes it's the same with everything is created yeah, that's right. Thank you very much for helping me. <laughs> Do you know, it's really funny how 28 years of officership, Andrew's never done the YP thought. <laughs> There is a reason for that, he says. <laughs> but I hope we all got something from that. We all need to keep that top up going or we'll be deflated and become useless. God wants to fill us with his very being to be all that he wants us to be. Now we look forward as the YP band use their breath to play us a music message for us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. 
say a big thank you to Gemma and the YP band those the missing we, we've missed them but you really made up for the missing members that was absolutely wonderful thank you very much for your message through music this morning now we're all going to take part as we give in the offering thank you surrender all. faith for playing that so well and reminding us that we surrender all to him let's pray lord bless these gifts that have been given this morning bless those who give and please bless those who will receive the help needed and will hear our mission and hear the good news of your birth death and resurrection because of the giving we have given. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to turn to our songsters and they're going to bring to us the message, How Can I Keep From Singing? Thank you.
say thank you to the songsters and to Seb for his choice for us this morning. How could I ever say enough? Uh, his, uh, his love is just so amazing. And the difference he's made to our lives, we just can't stop singing his praise. Thank you. Now we're all going to sing together. We're going to sing the wonderful words, Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. We're going to stand and sing. And as we sing, we'll invite our youngsters to leave for their activities this morning. Thank you. Let's stand. blood of the Lamb. Now we're going to have some verses found in scripture and Aleph is going to come and share them with us. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and she's commencing to read at verse 18. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of, wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? <clears throat> For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. 
But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you wear when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. God bless that reading for each one of us. Thank you, Ale. Vanda, we'll be looking at those verses in a little while, but we're going to sing again together um, the, the familiar words, my hope is built on nothing less, but we're going to use the chorus which says, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak, made strong in the Saviour's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. I remain seated as we sing together. Thank you.
strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord. Hope that brings comfort. Hope those words bring strength and inner peace that no matter what we're going to face this coming week, no matter what trials may come, no matter what storms may come, we know that he is the Lord, Lord of it all. And we can trust in him to make us strong. Now we're going to turn to the band. Our piece of music this morning uh, is by Paul Sharman, who is the bandmaster at the Regent Hall Salvation Army <coughs> on Oxford Street. And uh, he's used two tunes in this beautiful piece of music, one of which you may be uh, more familiar with. It's a hymn tune, Ottawa, to which we associate the words, Master, speak, thy servant heareth. But then he's used a more contemporary hymn, called Speak, O Lord. And the first verse says, Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen <coughs> today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfil in us all your purposes for your glory.
Say thank you to the band. Thank you to God for blessing us through the music of the band and for Catherine's choice this morning. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this privilege that is ours to be in worship of you here in this place, together in fellowship. We don't take it for granted, Lord. We know that there are areas around this world where Christians are still persecuted for their faith. There are areas where Christians cannot gather together in worship of you. So we thank you for this freedom that is ours. And we thank you for your presence with us this morning and for blessing us in so many different ways. But now I ask your blessing upon Andrew and upon the word that you have shared with him that, that he then in turn needs to share with us. Lord, help us to be attentive to what you want to say to us through him and give us the courage to act upon what we hear. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Have you ever seen the uh, Energizer battery commercial on television? You know, the one with the um, little bunnies where they appear beating a drum and the announcer says, still going, on he goes across the desert, over the hills, on lonely roads. Nothing seems to stop this little rabbit. Now, I want you to know and understand that the point of the commercial is not the rabbit, but it's the battery inside the rabbit, the drummer, that keeps it going. Now, it's important to have uh, batteries because weak batteries cause problems, don't they? Now, cars with weak batteries have problems with starting. And once the motor starts, the car usually runs, but it takes a great battery to get the spark started, particularly in cold weather. A weak battery can catch you out. Torches with weak batteries go dim. Radios with weak batteries, the music will fade and so on. Your mobile phone, if the weak battery is low, you will get disconnected. Why? Because the battery is the source of all power. But even a good battery is only half the job. I know this is a woman, but it is a true story that I read. There was a woman who was having trouble getting her car started, just in case you were thinking I'm a bit sexist. <laughs> but every time she would um, try to turn on the engine or the ignition, she got that clicking sound. So naturally, she thought that her battery was dying or dead. So without checking anything, she sent her son down to the local motor store and received a new battery. When he returned, he fitted the battery and uh, she tried once again to start the engine, but the same thing, the clicking sound. So finally, she called a mechanic who took one look at the, uh, the cable ends and analysed what the problem was. He said, you've got a really good battery, but your cables are corroded and bad. Now that day, she learnt a good lesson about her car. You must always make sure that you have a good connection to the battery. And we too, as Christians, must make sure that we have a good connection to our power source. And of course, that power source is Jesus. In our text that uh, Olive shared with us, the cross of Christ represents the power of God unto our salvation. It also represents the power of God for every believer to live in the Spirit. But you know, like the battery... We must have a clear connect to keep the power flowing. We must be in harmony with the will of God to benefit from the power that is available to each one of us. 
It is of little or no value to, to all of us to have the power of the Almighty at our disposal and let our connection get rusty and corrode away. You see, that corrosion causes a bad connection. And there are too many believers who get through life hearing that clicking sound that suggests that there is power under the bonnet that can't get through. And many of us have the ability to achieve greatness through the exercise of our gifts. But every time we turn the switch, all we get is that clicking sound. In our text... Paul writes to the church in Corinth about the wisdom of preaching the truth of the cross of Christ. And Paul goes on to explain that those who are saved recognize the cross as a symbol of the power of God. But to those outside of the faith, the church seems to be involved in simple foolishness. So what is this foolishness of which Paul speaks Maybe it's the command to love your enemies or to pray for those who use you. Maybe it's your belief that what you hope for will become evident through your faith. Maybe it's your belief that you are blessed with when men revile you and persecute you and utter all manner of evil against you falsely. Now note our text again. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. I'm reminded too in Romans 10 and verse 14, where it says that the first step to releasing the power of God is by hearing the word of God. When Paul spoke of the cross as the power of source for Christians, he was not talking about the wooden stake or the post in the ground that was used for capital punishment. When Paul spoke of the cross as a power source for Christians, he referred to what the cross symbolized. That symbolism includes the sacrifice of Christ, his blood shed on Calvary, his death burial and resurrection. The crucifixion of Christ transformed the cross from a symbol of shame and embarrassment to a symbol of the mighty power of God. The cross embodies this symbol because Christ's death on that cross blotted out our sin and man's foolish laws from which there could be no redemption. Our knowledge of the historical accounts of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is our power source. That's what we're getting at this morning. It is our spiritual energizer that just keeps on going and going and going, like the battery inside that rabbit playing its drum. There are many who are hooked up to the wrong source. They're trying to use a six-volt transistor to empower a 12-volt understanding. What I'm saying is, I'm saying that too many of God's created people are depending on their own skills and education to get them through life. But when trouble comes, that battery is too small for the job that God has for us to do. When you need that real power, you better be hooked into the power that holds the world in the palm of his hands, the lights in the sky, the moon and the stars. Now, in order to get the needed energy from your power source, you must have the right connection. You can have a good battery, but if that connection is wrong, there is no power. Now, Paul said it best when he declared... Nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And when it comes to this life of a Christian, there must be no space that separates us from the Master. 
And that space in the analogy of the battery was that loose or bad connection. We must be fully connected to Christ. And the life of a Christian must be lived in such a way that there is nothing between our soul and our Saviour, Jesus. And what can corrode your connection with God? Well, it could be pride that corrodes your cables and interfere with your connection. It could be hatred that will keep you from having a good connection with God. Jealousy will keep you from having that good connection with God also. And strife will keep you from having that good connection. But there are many more, aren't there? Get rid of the things that are keeping you from having that great connection, that good connection with the power source, which is Christ. And finally, make sure both cables are connected. Along with the live wire, there must be an earth cable. Somebody today is trying to get a prayer through and you're not properly earthed. You're trying to sing his praises, but your earth wire is loose. So how do I become properly connected? You do this when you accept Christ as your personal saviour. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. <coughs> Friends, abide in the word of God. Connect yourself to the cross of Christ then plunge into the foolishness of loving those who hate you. Plunge into the foolishness of believing without seeing. And plunge into the foolishness of praying for those who use you. And find a blessing in persecution. Connect yourself to the belief that in Christ we truly do live. We truly do move and we have a being and a belonging. When you need power, you need to go to the one that created the trees and the flowers. When you need power, you need to go to the one that is able to heal the sick and to raise the dead. You see, Jesus is better than any power source because he's got power to spare. They crucified him on a cross. They buried him in a tomb and they tried to drain him of his power. But early one Sunday morning, he rose with power in his hands, wonder-working power, soul-saving power, healing power in his hands. Are you connected to his power this morning? Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that we are correctly connected to you. That we can receive your power to enable us to be the people you have made us and called us to be. We would ask, Lord, that you be with us throughout this coming week. That people may see that power active within us, working in us as we have conversations, as we show love through the actions that we take. May your power be evident in all that we do. We ask all these things, Lord, in and through your name just now. Amen. Amen. In closing, we're going to turn to our final song, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us. A reminder that we need to take this power that we've spoken about this morning out into the communities in which Christ has placed us. Let's stand and we'll sing these two verses straight through, please.
your Holy Spirit be our guide. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in, in your hands, and the wisdom of God be reflected in your words. May the knowledge of God flow from your hearts that all might see, and friends in seeing, believe. God bless you all. Amen.